So you want to learn how to create custom forms for your borrowers to e-sign in LendingPad. Well, let me show you how step by step. So we're here in the dashboard of LendingPad and I want to show you where you're going to find these forms in a file. So let's go into Diana Pratt's file. When we go in here, we can go over to the Actions tab. And under the Actions tab, under Other Actions, we have our print forms. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Preview, and we can see all of the forms in there. You can also click to look at packages. And here, we have a couple of packages that are in there. So let's look at these custom forms and packages. How do we create them? Hit Cancel. And up here in the top menu, we're going to go to Settings. Once we're on Settings, we're going to go to Print Forms, down here at the bottom. Now that we're in Print Forms, we can see all the system created print forms that are in here. We can also see at the top that we have Print Form Packages and Create New Print Form. Let's take a look at print form packages. Here you can see we saw the two that we saw earlier, redisclosure and underwriting. They're system generated print form pa packages. If you need to change these up in any way, just click on edit and you would be able to add additional print forms. We're gonna go back and we're gonna create a new print form package. So we're gonna click create new we're gonna give this package a name and we're going to call this initial disclosures. And we're gonna click create new print form package. So we see it here, let's add some information into it. Let's add in those forms. We're gonna click manage. Here under print forms, we're gonna click add print forms. And all the print forms are available. You can also search for them if necessary. So here I'm gonna put in my 1003, I'm gonna search for one. Let's I'm going to search for the 4506T. Uh, we'll go ahead and just search for a few others. Anti-steering. Okay, now that I have all the forms that I want in my initial disclosure package, I'm going to click on Add Print Forms to Package. Now they're all on there. I'm going to go ahead and Save Changes. So now initial disclosures will show up when I want to go look at my print form package. Let's move on to creating custom forms. So I'm gonna go back to print forms. And here I have create new print form. So I'm gonna click there. And here I'm gonna call this one Texas 50A6, which is a regulation that we have in Texas for when someone is doing a cash out refinance loan on their primary residence. So if I wanted to, I could add that information to the description. I'm gonna pick a category. So it could be under mortgage transactions, state disclosures, et cetera. I'm gonna put this under state disclosures. And it's going to be active, available for package, um, of course, but it's not available only for package. So I wanna be able to get to this disclosure, um, whether or not it's in a package. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save changes. So there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and go back in, go over to templates. And here in templates, I'm gonna add a new template. If I want to look up parameters, which will make more sense in a moment, I can look them up here as well. So I'm gonna add a new template. And with the new template, I'm going to give this one a name. And I'm going to name uh, this te template the same. Texas uh, 5086. If I want to, I could put on date for copyright. And since this is a PDF, I'll be uploading it from a template. But first, let me show you how to create that template. So I have it here as a PDF, and the entire uh, disclosure, which is literally the law. And I'm gonna need my borrowers to e-sign on this line and this line. So how do I do that? You have to have the professional version of Adobe Acrobat. And when you do, you'll have the option to prepare a form. 
So if you don't see this option, um, you can add it as long as you have the professional version. Um, and that's by going here to more tools and you'll see it as an option. So I'm going to click on prepare form and then it's going to let the file or scan a document to begin. Um, and then I'm going to click on this document requires signatures. I'm going to click start. So it says no form fields detected. And I'm going to click OK. That's fine. I'm going to create those form fields. So I'm going to take this box at the top, add text field. I'm going to click it. I'm going to bring it here to the line. So what information needs to go here? Well, the parameter. So let's go back over to lending pad. And remember before I said you can look at the parameters. We're going to do that right now. So view basic print form parameters. I'm going to click there. And I'm trying to e-sign. So I'm just going to type in e-sign here. And I can see the parameter for borrower one, primary borrower, e-sign initials, and e-sign signature. I need e-sign signature. I'm simply going to copy this. And then I'm going to go back to Adobe Acrobat and I'm going to paste. There you go. And hit close. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'll go ahead and grab it first. We're going to do it for borrower two as well. Borrower two, e-sign signature. Here it is. Copy. I'm going to go back over to Adobe Acrobat, bring out that text box, and I'm going to hit paste. Okay. Simple as that. I'm going to go ahead and come over here. And now we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and save this so I can upload it. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just save it on my desktop and I'm going to call it 12 day disclosure e-sign. Okay, hit save. So now I know where it is on my desktop and I have it set up and for um, e-sign. I'm going to go back into lending pad. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the basic print parameters. And I'm back here. Now I'm ready to upload my PDF template. So I'm going to select the file from my computer. I'm going to go to 12 day disclosure eSign. I'm going to go ahead and save changes. Okay. I'm going to go back in so I can review those changes. Going over to templates and now I can actually see the form. Right, you see those light blue boxes? That's letting me know it's grabbed the right form um, for e-signing. Now let me show you a few more things. Below this general box is conditions. So remember before I said this is only for those who are getting a loan, a cash out with their primary residence in Texas. So I'm going to add some parameters for when this shows up. So here, property to state equals, I'm going to put in Texas. And then I'm going to put that this is only for cash out refinance. So I'm going to look at loan purpose. And there's cash out refinance. Now everything on here is correct. I'm going to save changes. Now there's one other way that you can create a custom form and have it e-signed and that is if you use the HTML. So let me show you how to do that. Again, let's go in and create a new print form and we will name this form ITP Acknowledgement. Okay, and we'll put this ITP Acknowledgement under Processing. And it's going to be active and we're going to make sure it's always available so we're not going to toggle the second one on. Hit save changes. Brings us back out here. I'm going to go ahead and do a lookup for it. ITP. So there it is. I'm going 
to manage and I'm going to go ahead and create it in the HTML now. Here we are, I'm going to go over to templates. I'm going to add a new template. I'm going to see here it says create HTML template. I'm going to click there. And this brings up just like you would find in any word processing program. So I'm going to bring over a form that I typed up in word processing. Paste it in, intent to proceed acknowledgement. I need to make sure I have my borrower's names in here. So borrower one, we've got to look up that parameter. So I'm going to click here for parameters since we're using the HTML form. And I can simply just type it in. So I'm going to type in borrower so I can look it up. So there's borrower one and here's the name. So I can just click add here just automatically inserts the right parameter and then I'm going to do the same for borrower two. So now I have borrower one and borrower two's names here. Now I need to do the property address and again I'm just going in and replacing the correct information with uh, the parameter and then I'm just going through the rest of my form and putting in the correct information and put that in. So both of these will be um, in e-signature for borrower one and borrower two. If you want to do multiple borrowers on these, on these forms, you would be able to do that. If you need to do borrower and co-borrower on these forms, um, you're able to do that as well. Okay, so now we're going to make sure all this looks good. I don't need any conditions for this one. It's nice to have a name and we're going to call this one ITP. to again you can copyright it the current date or whatever date you want and then if all looks good scroll up save changes so now that form will also be available so let's go back and look at these forms we're going to go back to the dashboard we're going to go into Dinah Pratt's file and in Dinah Pratt's file, this is a cash out refinance in Texas. So we should be able to see that form. Let's go over to actions. Let's go to print forms. We're gonna preview here. And one was under state disclosures. So there's Texas 58.6. And under processing ITP acknowledgement. Okay, it looks like both forms are there. The next thing we want to check on is to make sure that you've turned on eSign in order to be able to eSign the documents. So when we scroll down here on actions, it says eSign actions inactive. So let me show you how to turn that on. Let's go over here to settings and then to actions. And you'll see eSign. We'll go ahead and manage action. We have this checked. All you do is click on activate action. Ask if we were going to do this, confirm it yes, and go ahead and save changes. Once you've done that, you'll see next to eSign, um, it no longer says inactive. So when we come back over to the dashboard, go back into Diana Pratt's file, go over to actions, we'll notice now the e-sign is available. Okay, let's go ahead and do some e-signatures. So to e-sign, you have to go immediately over to send. It's the print forms. So let's go ahead and do this for our, uh, where is it? Our Texas 50 E6. And I guess we could go ahead and do it for our ITP. And we're going to click on e-sign document. So here you'll see that stocky sign, we're initiating document signing. And there is a charge for $2 per e-sign request. So I could have picked numerous forms to be e-signed at this point. It would still have been the only same $2. It's per request. So every time you hit that send request, it's $2. 
Okay, it says actions eSign request was sent successfully. So down here with eSign, we can click on view. Scroll down, we can see what was sent. We see that today uh, we had an initial document signing. We can expand. And here you can see the reference ID that it was sent to Diana Pratt. So let me show you what it looks like when Diana Pratt receives it. So here we have the receipt of the email from Diana Pratt to Diana Pratt, and it says here, review document. So I'm gonna go ahead and click review document. It's going to open up a new tab. And here you can look at the information. It says, please read and agree to use electronic records and signatures. So she will check there and then hit continue. Um, from here, it, they're asking if there's any questions or whatnot, just click OK, and then hit start. It'll bring you right down to the required signature, click there, and your borrower will have the option to just type in their name and use DocuSign's signature that's created, or they can go in and draw in their signature. So I'm going to use this one, adopt and sign, and that brought me to my next one. And they can always scroll back up to read through the information. This is the Texas 586 disclosure. So I'm going to go ahead and sign there as well. And I'm done. I just click finish. They can sign to get a copy of the document, but they will still get an email even if they don't sign up. So all we have to do is click no thanks. And that's it. So now when we go back over here to Diana Pratt's file, when I click on check status, you'll notice that I see my status checks up here. I can go to the very top one. It's a status signed. Then I'm able to download the document. Now I'm going to show you over here first in documents. I did have an e-signed document from before, but that was a few days ago. And now when I download here, I'm going to get the new e-signed when I click on it, it opens up a new tab and I can review the e-signed document. So I can see here the intent to proceed acknowledgement was signed. I can see down here that the um, 58 was signed as well. Okay, so if I needed to rename these or break them up again, I can come in here on manage document and put them in the place. And that's how you create custom forms for your borrowers to e-sign in LendingPad. Questions? You can review all the support options for coming to the top menu and clicking on support, or you can reach out to your LendingPad account executive. Thank you for using LendingPad as your loan origination system.